slow down his level six as much as you can. Make sure he doesn't get to one item for a while. And try to go into the mid game with, at the very least, Boombax being at the level he's supposed to be and OD having one movement item. If OD can get auto attacks off, he can burn through those CK illusions. But as the game gets later and there gets to be more and more CC up, OD's going to struggle to even get those four or five autos off to kill the CK illusions. Like, late game ODs that we expect this huge 80 int stolen astral, a lot of times they just only get three or four autos off in a fight. We go. Our you got spirit. clutch? Yes, let's do it. All right. Clutch gamers on the radiant side. We got Fly Solo playing the Phoenix. Our metal on that Outworld Devourer. Also known as OD. Bat Rider in the hands of Rappy. Juggernaut being played by Gabby. And Boombox on the Nyx Assassin here. And he's going to be running down Jerax on the other side. but. <laughs> And he will get away. On the OG side, we've got Fly playing the Oracle, Honest playing Invoker, Jerax on the Earth Spirit, S4 on Beastmaster, and No Tail gonna be playing a Chaos Knight. Not as out of the box this time from OG, but definitely still some interesting picks. The Oracle is definitely out of left field. We were seeing, again, completely different region, and to be fair, Southeast Asia Redell's coming there for the regional qualifiers, and Oracle was making a fair amount of appearances to to our surprise to an extent. Now, again, even in that, she didn't... <laughs> I keep saying she... Oracle did not do very well uh, in that event, as he kind of has that history, so... Now, at the same time, I do feel like this hero is potentially pretty strong. I've always liked the idea that the, the skill set of Oracle. I think it kind of goes back to, though, to play at top tier, you know, to full efficiency, you could argue Oracle's one of the most difficult support heroes to play. And I think that Absolutely. has a part to do with it. Oracle is extremely squishy and easy to bring down, and every one of her tools can be used on a different person if she's gonna or if he's gonna play the most effect effectively. He wants to disarm somebody super important, root somebody else, whether it's for a purge or the actual snare. And it's just really hard to get into position to do all those things. Uh, I absolutely agree. It's one of the hardest here. Jarex is going to go for the rolling boulder on this courier. Mm -hmm. Timing is perfect. Yeah, what another courier snipe. Monster. Just line that up, 100%. So that's uh, that's no courier. Obviously, did get the salve delivered initially, but actually, top lane. Rappy's in trouble. No tell. Great hero blocking coming out. He has a man going to eat for another chaos bolt if he wants it to secure this kill. Jarex also trying to follow this up though, but Batrider pops the salve. And keep it as distance. Oh, they need to be careful yeah. not to get first blood of themselves now to that tower. Jerex almost like messed that up for them. His rolling boulder got him in front of Chaos Knight, and he's way slower than CK. So they couldn't get around the corner in time to actually stun Rappy right away. Well, the gank is a failure, unfortunately. Bottom lane. That is a successful kill. S4 goes down. Guessing the spin from Juggernaut and the assistance from the supports, of course, coming out. So nice find there. Yeah, very nice kill. There shouldn't have been a lot of kill pressure on us for down here. Well, Beastmaster doesn't have the greatest escape course. Back to the middle lane as Jerex rolls in. Armel, cold snap. Not going to be enough to run him down. Fly solo forked in a boombox. He misses the impale, unfortunately. Going for Mana right there. Yeah, nice dodge for Mana. They really just wanted to force the Astral out of Armel. If they did that, a Sunstrike could just land on his face. Probably going to provide enough damage to close the kill out. But not able to force it out of him. What's Rappy doing? Uh, trying to toy, uh, toy with them at the jungle camp, even. Honestly, Take some of those last hits. If if No Tail dies here, it was a serious mistake because Fly is going to be able to cover him so well in this lane. Fortune's End will actually purge off all of the Napalm stacks. So even if that Rider gets to the point where he could go on somebody, all Fly has to do is group up with No Tail, purge themselves, and then run away gleefully. I roll middle lane. It's Phoenix. Scariest threat necessarily. I was to say, I don't think I've heard Phoenix roaming middle very often. <laughs> yeah. I saw somebody creeping up there after the side, and sure enough, it's it's Phoenix. Got that Icarus dive. Too much to be scared of, though, and especially since he had her spear nearby. Anna, feeling comfortable, I'm sure, about being fine. But Phoenix going to come back to the bottom lane. But as you said, I mean, Beastmaster should feel pretty comfortable. But... He, did die earlier, so... Yeah. A little bit more to it. definitely hurts, but able to be farming right now. He's, he's actually 
farming both the lane creeps and the jungle right now. So a little bit of bonus efficiency, but Gabby finally going to come in and put a stop to it. Expecting essentially free farm though for Gabby on the juggernaut rolling. Coming in from Jerex right here. The cold snap's going off too. Puts himself on it with the astral imprisonment. Nick's Assassin going to be here with the impel to try to save the day as well. Invoker, mana burn on top of that. So Boombox looks like it's going to be enough to maybe save that orbit venom though. Doing work and it is going to be enough damage. I don't actually credit the Fort Spirit. Taking credit for the last hit. Oh, uh, and Jerex there with the victory boulder smash. It's like, I got level two. Deal with it. Kick the boulder at Boombox. Um, uh, Boombox, by the way, not getting spiked carapace at level two. Definitely interesting. Mana burn. Mana burn is, is great if he's going to be hanging around mid, just burning on out. An invoker without any mana is a sad invoker. Our spirit camp in the four minute rune here as well in the radiant jungle. That's Anna middle lane, meanwhile. Invoker. Trying Ooh. to run. The last attack is not enough damage. So close. Get that salve up. Jack's in a bit of trouble here, actually. Oh, he's out of spirits, though. Yep, Fly Solo will fall. So they're kind of man moding against one another, but Jerex has the last laugh. Top lane, Rappy goes down, though, on the Bat Rider. This time they finally do catch him out, so. <laughs> yeah, they definitely it, have an action at all three lanes here. Top lane's terrifying for the Bat Rider now. Now that Detail has points up in both of his, his uh, aggressive skills, and you have level two purifying flames, the burst damage coming out of this lane is just filthy from OG. And Nick's Assassin going to sit on top of Fly. Try to get that clarity off, if anything, but can't get close enough. Good job keeping his distance. The clarity currently active onto Invoker. Armel's going to run in, take it off there, but it's basically done anyway, so... Not a big deal. Look at that intelligence he's still in so far, though. That's adding up. No, yeah, it's about the only way he can stay competitive in this as far as lasting. And Ana's going to try to turn on him. Thankfully, the bottled Invis rune will save him. Boomback's taking this mana burn is paying off, though. It's making it so Ana just can't actually play up on our mill here at all. Juggernaut, 27-9. You got Chaos Knight, though. I haven't mentioned too much about him, and no surprise, no -Tail's doing very well. Refarming up here. Yeah, so he's going to even use the Reality Rift. <clears throat> What's up? What does he have queued up on no -Tail? What is that the... Is that, oh, it's the new Dom. Is that well, the Helm of the Dominator? Yeah. Yeah, it's the new Dom. Uh, that would be a very bizarre pickup. I I'm curious to see what he does with it. Well, that with the, the inner beast of Beastmaster. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot it's, of our attack speed. It would definitely set them up to be a huge pushing force in the mid-game. And it does provide him some much-needed health regen, just so that he can sustain a little better in the lane. Usually you don't have CKs going a lifesteal item or, or any sort of real regen. So let's see if he actually commits for that or not. But bottom lane, OG is setting up as if they want to make a play, but definitely tell Clutch Gamers has information. They're kind of zoning off to the side and I don't think they're going to get that opening. Now Fly is still hiding in here. He does have that fortune's end. Fly is probably going to be happy to wait here until S4 hits level 6. Once the roar comes online, the Phoenix is pretty close to a free kill. So I think they're just waiting for that, that moment to come. And he's getting very close. Oh, Icarus dive in. They're going balls with himself. Is the Radiant side, but now S4. Can he make his way out of it? The heal's coming out for Morkel. Has to play this defensive now. Roll's going to miss. Phoenix keeping his distance. Uh, the root eventually comes out on top of the Sunstrike. And sure enough, Phoenix will go down. So not only saves S4, but doing work to get the turn kill. Arg, three experience for level six on Beastmaster here. This is oh, so man. sad. He gets it. Jerax rolls on out for the cliff. <laughs> It's like he just teleported there. In the meantime, No-Tail did grab Phantasm right at level 6, just popped it and exploded the Batrider. He's got evolutions. He hit the proc, ended up getting 3, and that does a lot of damage. He's going to use an appell push the top lane a little bit, but Rappy, yep, falling again, 7.5 minutes in. 5-1 to one lead for OG right now. But yeah, you do have a level 6 beast matcher at this point, so that Primal War is ready to go. See if and his farm's comes actually, up. his farm's not too bad. Sitting on belt of strength, almost a thousand extra gold at eight minutes. That's actually very good. Um, not quite as good as the last game, but it, it should be more than passable for keeping us four in this game. And honestly, how do you deal with no tail at this point? The, 
Batrider's not even able to stand up to him solo when Phantasm is up. Yeah. Jerax is just running at Gabby right here. Jesus. <laughs> he definitely wants to get him to react of sorts, but he's not falling for it. Gabby's playing it defensive. See the Hawk coming in. The Root comes out, though. He has to start spinning away, and he will do so. It's still going to run down the Boulder Smash. Ooh, good job spreading out, but Phoenix got close enough for the Reality Rift to pull in. Lee skills in. The Roar connects on a Juggernaut, actually. He has an Omni Slash after this. That's a Necessary. long way away. The Reality Rift, man. The range of that's ridiculous. The Chaos Bolt and the Sun Strike finishes. OG just going deep. And it is working so far, but the Sanity's Eclipse comes out from the OD in return. And you see the Imprisonment putting Chaos Knight under. Going to force him to walk away. So all they got was the... Uh, They'll get us for here too, I think. And it looks like they are going to get Beastmaster as well. Yes, they are. All right. A so tad overzealous there from OG. Yeah, but they still managed to get a two for two. They dropped the Juggernaut. No Tail's fine. All in all, OG will be relatively happy with that. And at the same time, Ana's just farming. He, he's got nine minute Midas with the double null and full wand start. This is dream for an Invoker. Yeah, Invoker, 550 gold already saved up. The Axe well on the works here. I like that Yules or four staff even needed. It's going to go very routine build. Chaos Knight, he still has that uh, Elm of the Dominator queued up, so... Like it wasn't really a fluke or him just going to mess it around. It seems like that's definitely going to be the choice. And again, that with the inner beast like we're talking about. The attack speed hurl is going to be real. Here on OG yeah. side, he dominates, say, an Alpha Wolf, for example, and all that plus damage on top of that. Yeah, and honestly, it may be tough for Clutch to actually bring down the creep that he dominates. Fly, poor fly. Eats yeah. an Omni Slash. Yeah, it's, it's all right, I guess. I mean, it cost him an Omni Slash, but... Yep. Absolutely did. Tome's up now, though, so he will be level 6. Shouldn't quite happen in the same way again. And at the same time, you've got OG just farming the other two lanes. They are going to give up this tier 1 top. Without any defense here, you just let this go. Yeah, so pressure in the bottom lane, continuing to do so themselves, and they might as well even put damage into the tier 2 tower. If Clutch Gamers is still working on that tier 1 at the top lane, it seems like that's exactly not what they're going to do. Instead, they're going to rotate out. Oh, now, Jerex is still down here, as this S4. Yeah, S4 alone pressure. has a lot of pressure because this Aura goes on the creeps as well. Middle lane. Our male could be in some trouble. The Hannah Minus himself, of course, trying to finish his. Power treads right here. But again, playing it safe. No something's out. Fly the very aggressive ward behind the tower coming out. You have Nyx Assassin. He has his vendetta currently active. The reality red pulling on OD. Can he get the imprisonment off in time? He absolutely cannot. He goes down right there. Boombox is charging in. Look for the target. Maybe gonna go for Ana if he gets some support, but currently doesn't have anyone with him, so. Jerax is so good at this. Yeah. I mean, the rolling boulder in from pretty much max range and then connecting with silence on the way in. That was just beautifully played. And you gotta start to wonder, is this first band material now again if you're playing against OG? It was for a long time and it's looking like it's back. If, if Earth Spirit's back in general, you gotta think that's definitely a warrant. And Nyx Assassin, the setup perfect right there. The, the roar, I mean, the boulder smash almost might have been enough, I want to say, but the roar absolutely makes it enough. Uh, get the kill on the Nyx Assassin. Chaos Knight nearby. The Helm of the Dominator is finished. Does he have a creep yet? I don't think so. Um, wait, is that his creep? No. Yeah, he'll grab the Alpha Wolf here. Did manage to find one right away. And if you're on the side of Clutch Gamers, it's actually a little difficult and daunting to even just bring down this creep. The the only easy way to do it would be with OD's Midas. Otherwise, it's going to take quite a bit of time, quite a bit of autos, and potentially just put you in the range for Jerax to come in and wreck your day. Oracle's going to have Arcane Boots even finished right here. He's also level 7. Of course, we haven't really seen the False Promise come into play just yet, but haven't necessarily needed it. They're up 9-4 to in Hero Kills. Until Phantasm's a bot lane to push this tower. <laughs> Loves his illusions. And again, that with the Helm of the Dominator. It's even more value out of it. Now he's... Yeah, this is, the, this is the epitome of a tempo build for the CK. They, they yeah. want to get something out of this item pickup. Means he doesn't have that armlet though, and I wonder if he's does he still go the armlet here? You think? Potentially, he may go S and Y. That's kind of the it's too late to go armlet, but I wish I had an armlet item. 
We'll have to see what he wants to do here with that. Mm -hmm. And he bought his own bottle. That's that's also a an interesting idea. Since your invoker's not going to go a bottle, it's a good way for him to keep his mana pool topped up. CK always has no problems. I'm really liking this build from No-Tail, actually. It's really, really heads up with the way the game is. Yeah. It's reacting with, and in fact, pops the Hastian right here. Obviously using the Hawk to scout, but... Clutch Gamers sees it in time, and they start running away, but Gabby's still not in the best of spots. In fact, they're going to find Oracle themselves. Omni Slash committed for They get the kill, but at what cost now? They're going to right into a trap. The Chaos Bolt goes off in a Nyx Assassin. Spin out. Nope, but the roar goes through. And the Sunstrike to finish the job. Can Boombox makes the escape of the TP? Did they use everything? No, they did not. Reality Rift pull in, and that's a two for one. <laughs> I'm losing Oracle. Booker. Did they use everything? <laughs> Nah, uh, very nicely done though. Saving the roar for the very last second to stop the Juggernaut TP, and still managing to catch the plus one on the back. So yeah, sure, you killed an Oracle, but very, very painful. Od just gets your late. Obviously, again, he went the hand of Midas, so rather wants to farm right now. And four staff, eventual Hurricane Pike is coming, but more time it takes to get set items online, the more objectives you're going to be losing. As top tower is now even in trouble. Yeah, OG's honestly kind of putting themselves on a clock here, but I think they're okay doing it. The Beastmaster's still committing to that Necro book, looking to go full Necro 3, and No-Tail has a BKB queued up next. This is going to make the, have this massive power spike as soon as that's picked up. Ana has his Zags already. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be at, like, just this insane spike in about two minutes. Having an Ags this early on for an Invoker just must feel so good. You almost yeah. don't even have the mana to support it. <laughs> like, you're, you're flying through spells so fast, and you don't have any other items or enough levels. But you're not going to complain. It's a 15-minute Agonims. Yeah, I think he's uh, just fine with that idea right there. But Tier 2 Tower now being heavily pressured. You got Clutch Gamers smoked up. That's going to avoid the Hawk, but will this work out in the end? They have a jump opportunity. Supernova, it is ready to go. The lasso, they catch Anna. Supernova in the back lines. Fly, he's going to run away from it. They're not going to be able to stop that Supernova. S4 runs up to it, but it's going to be way too late. It finally goes off right here. Out comes the meatball, though, from Anna. Armel's going to end up dropping. He's staying dead right now. The Omni Slash bouncing around. We'll be able to take out the Beastmaster in the back lines, but now No Tail pulls in Juggernaut. Reality Ridge pull in. And enough damage, more than enough damage to finish him off. Bat Rider, the Soul Survivor. A clutch Gamer side. That was almost best case scenario for Clutch there. They got a great initiation off the Supernova. Not only did it not get killed, OG kind of hesitated and fought around it. It still blew up and caught three, but just doesn't have the damage. The Sanity's Eclipse didn't come down there. And OG just looking super strong in this game right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're Clutch, that was everything you wanted. And you only killed a Beastmaster. Did, I, I saw they, he lassoed Anna, but I'm guessing the False Promise took mm -hmm. it off right away if he used it on him. Yeah, um, it wasn't instant, but it was pretty close. And then that meatball was just huge. The meatball deafening blast yeah. from Anna hit like two people and shoved them straight backwards. OD basically died just yep. from that. Oh, sure. Oh, down so over here. Kill. <laughs> I heard the sun start going off, but I was like, oh, nothing of it. What the hell is that? Jesus. That chaos and, night, man. This just feels good if you're OG because not only did you do fine in lanes and put pressure on them, Ana didn't have to do anything. Ana got some ganks. It was nice. They're looking to go on Nyx here too. He makes it look so easy. I, I, I mean, we need to stop praising it so much because people know, but it's just... Derek said the, these barrel rolls, we see all the time players completely whiffing that ability. Feels like yeah. he's just on point every single time. Some heroes just click with you. They, they just feel natural when you're playing them, and so there they go again. There's a Reality Rift pulling, and Juggernaut, he's dead. Maybe? Yes. Not maybe His... playing it, but... Uh, not quite oh. going to drop the Phoenix. Fiery Spirit's too good. Yeah. Sun Strike and it's... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he is. Oh, dead. man. In all honesty, I, I've never seen a player who can rolling boulder geomagnetic group as smooth as he can. Like, heroes look silenced and I don't even see the boulder. They're going to transition into a Roshan with this. I would imagine they're pretty good at killing Roshan here. Yeah, it, it's not fantastic, but it's definitely good. Inner Beast. Inner Beast is fantastic at doing it. Reality Rift shreds the armor. 
Alpha Wolf. Yeah, they're... They'll definitely get there. Doing it pretty well. Arcane Rune actually bottled up by Chaos Knight, so use that before that Phantasm. And Okay, now they're not going to give this up easy. Clutch Gamers running on in. They want to make a fight happen. Roshan's not dead just yet, so taking a little bit too long. No tail running away. He's disarmed currently. Well, so got saved up by Orko or attempted at least. He's going to be stunned down. The Primal Roar, though, hits on OD. Now, no tail turning his damage. Phantasm already popped out. This Omni Slash bounce around on multiple heroes. Oracle saving himself with a false promise for the time being. They do kill OD as well as Phoenix. And now Juggernaut, nice boulder smash done on both with the science after the fact. They get the couple more kills. Fly actually stays alive throughout. And Rappy, one, two, three, Sunstrike. Double kill and for Ana. Literally, oh, right. The They're all dead. I want to go back and watch this too and just look at what Fly did in that fight. He ulted himself. Managed to, I saw him nuke two enemies, protect his own teammates, and still squeeze in enough heals to keep himself alive there. <laughs> that, that was some nuts Oracle play there, and just super clean from OG, and Ana just instantly bots his bottom with Alacrity and, and starts pressuring this. Uh, might come back to bite him in the ass, though. Uh, maybe not. Don't have enough firepower there, and he just walks it off. The defensive urn comes out. Oh, Earth Spirit and Orko both. Oh no, I okay. I thought I had an Orko clicked earlier, but no, just Earth Spirit with the urn. Yep. yep. Orko with the arcane boots and the mana. The uh, magic wand um, there. This is kind of an Ana thing. Most invokers, once they get the Aghanims, tend to go a movement speed or a movement item, usually blink. Ana tends to not. Like, if he buys a blink at all, it's usually fifth, sixth item. He's going straight into the Lincolns here. It's going to be huge in stopping Lasso. Batrider so far from any other item to break the Lincolns that it's going to make Ana a very, very difficult target to go on. So where's this comeback mechanic for Clutch Gamers? OD's 8,500 net worth, that Hurricane Pike is coming. I mean, Juggernaut, we really haven't touched on him too much, but has the Yasha, the Mantis style almost finished? Is, is it some yeah. items, or is it just going to, you know... I mean, Mantis style almost finished at 20 minutes. It's just a little too late. Their best shot would be, like, Everyone else dying but OD, and OD just racks up in somehow throughout the fight, and then just Sanity Eclipse for like three or four kills. Master one Prismit will delay this a little bit, but now OD, he's... This is basically OD saving a Phoenix, or attempting to, and he dies because of it. A, I mean, a good idea, but really... In hindsight, you really would have been better off running away at that point. Nice! I love how I go through a two-minute trade about how Ana doesn't buy Blink early, and then he buys Blink. <laughs> Ignoring his quick buy. Thanks, I appreciate it. Oh. Got him. Yeah. How do you stop Mithil here, though? He's, he's got his BKB. Pretty full test can still. You have an Aegis on him. Nice. Reality Rift feels like it's it's like an like a thousand range. What what is does it even say the range on it? Yeah, seven hundred. Yeah. It's a little longer than most heroes auto attack range. But if you start the animation and they don't fog it or get really far away, usually you finish it. Easy kill on Nyx, melee racks, it's melting. Fly Solo just going to sit from a distance and <laughs> needs to be careful there, but... Oh, there's that Reality Rift. Guess what? Stun's coming out, but no until actually falling back rather than trying to secure that kill. Probably the smart decision. He does have an Aegis, but doesn't want to die deep in their base. His teammates Wait. are just pushing the bottom lane meanwhile. Ghana's going to kill the melee racks. I was just watching him sit there with no health. So that's two melee racks given away. 21 minutes. I mean, Oki's almost managing a thousand gold a minute on their lead. This is... This is all but unadusted at this point. Yeah, it does feel like we're in that bit of an overtime phase almost already. And we had a game earlier. It's, I want to say it was even the first game against a newbie, if I'm not mistaken, where Clutch Gamers, uh, you know, they, they, were, they were down similar to this, honestly, and uh, they, they hung into the very bitter end, I'll say that. So, team that does not want to give up, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty grim right here, as you mentioned. How do they really stop the Chaos Knight? And there's just no obvious answer. There's no miracle item or... Miracle's not in this game, so what can you do? In uh, EE's Ask Me Anything, someone asked what the differences in the regions were. Yeah, Fly Solo's dead again. And his his analysis of Southeast Asia was they flame, they're, uh, they're low skill, but they never give up. It's like, ouch. Jeez. Okay. We'll see at TI-7. I know, right? OD. No, no Sunstrike, but... Did he try to push him into that? Jerex gets the kill there. Just a matter of time now. Pushing in 40 seconds for OD. No buyback. 
You're gonna lose the mid. ECCG is like, screw it, let's just try to push tier 3 ourselves at the top lane. We're not gonna win a fight right now. Let's see what we can get. But in the meantime, they're on the verge of what could possibly be Megas now. Coming out from OG, so they're gonna work on the tier 3 at the top. Yeah, looking like it. I'm really impressed by how much work this Helm of the Dominator actually did in this game for No-Tail. The, the aura alone, the HP aura, has saved them in multiple fights, just making sure that they're in sustainable push-level health after they win the fight. The item just went from top tier to no tier after a couple of patches. But No-Tail kind of showing here that maybe, uh, maybe there is something to it. There's a Reality Rift pulling on a Phoenix. Easy kill there. And trying to finish the game off for good now. OD, he's caught too. Now they have to again catch his bat rider. It's such a short cooldown, only six seconds here. There's the applauses. GG's come out and it's official. OG will finish five and two here in the groups. That absolutely secures them, the, the winners. Again, they, they might have even with the loss here, but this is just no questions asked. 100% secures the slot for them, so they will be moving into the upper bracket. Not going to have to fight through single elimination hell. And what game do we have for our final game of the day? EGFY is going to be a huge game. If one of the teams still finish around that 4 3 part, that could be the cyber match between upper and lower bracket for both teams. Yeah, now, now IG is their lower bracket with four losses. Though. 